non-real numbers, we use the symbol R prime to represent non-real numbers. R is for the real numbers. So R prime means not real numbers. So these are non-real numbers. And um, we will want to be in a position, guys, to identify non-real numbers. An example of a non-real number will be the square root of a negative 4. If you take your calculator and you calculate the square root of negative 4 using your calculator, your calculator will tell you that there is a net error. And you will remember by now that square root of every negative number is actually a net error. We do not get square root of a negative number. So these are non-real numbers. But for the guys that are doing AP maths, the square root of negative 4 actually is equal to 2i. That, that is not applicable here in maths. So the square root of a negative number is non-real. So please write that down. Uh, square root of a negative number is non-real. Okay, uh, the good thing is it's not only square roots. I want you to try, for instance, take uh, a moment, use your calculator for now, and calculate the fourth root of a minus 4, and maybe the sixth root of a minus 4. You can change the 4 to any other number if you want. And maybe finally the eighth root of a minus 4. So I'm picking even roots. Like that one there, there is a 2 there which we don't have to write. Uh, this is the fourth root of minus 4. 4 is even. This is the sixth root of negative 4. That is the eighth root of negative 4. If you use your calculator, you will discover that all these numbers are actually non-real. So in short, a non-real number is one where the root here is even and the number in there is negative. Okay, please learn that somehow. You should be able to identify non-real numbers. Now using that thinking now, I want us to apply that knowledge that we have. Uh, I want us to find or to determine for which values of x this expression here will be non-real. For which values of x is the square root of x minus 1 non-real? Right, we said earlier on that Square root of a negative number is a non-real number. Now this is square root of x minus 1. So this would be non-real if x minus 1 is negative. Alright? So if x minus 1 is negative, then the square root of x minus 1 will be non-real. So this is what we write. x minus 1 should be negative in order for that thing to be non-real. And negative means smaller than 0. Any number smaller than 0 is negative, so x minus 1 should be smaller than 0 in order for that expression to be non-real. Now, if you move the minus 1 to the other side, that will give you x is smaller than 1. Now, what this means is, for this expression, if we replace x with any number that is smaller than 1, then the result will be a non-real number. So this is how we solve these kind of problems. So anything that you are given, for instance, uh, if we want to know, um, like we are given something like 2x minus 1. Now this is an algebraic expression. So we want to know for which values of x this will be non-real. Right, so this will be non-real, obviously, if that number 2x minus 1 is negative, which means it is smaller than 0. So if 2x minus 1 is smaller than 0, then the expression, the whole expression is non-real. 
Uh, now we need to find x because we are interested in x. So we need to take the minus 1 to the other side. That becomes a 1. Then we can divide both sides by 2. So we get x is smaller than 1 over 2. This means if you replace x in that expression with any number that is smaller than 1 over 2, then that expression will be non real What about undefined numbers? An example of an undefined number is 7 over 0. I don't even want to call this a number because this is not a number really. This is just an expression and this expression is undefined. There is no number like this. You don't find it in the real number set. You don't find it in the non-real number set. So it, it, it is just not there. We can't define it. So if you take any number and you divide it by zero, the result is an undefined number. Okay, so let's apply that. For which values of x is this expression here, 7 over x minus 1, undefined? All right, you will get questions like this. For which values of x is the expression 7 over x minus 1 undefined? We said there that if the denominator is 0, then the expression is undefined. So the answer, or to answer your question, this will be undefined if x minus 1 is equal to 0, which means if x is equal to 1. Okay, and that will be your answer. I hope you get that. Just take your denominator and put it equal to 0, and then solve that for x. That value of x cannot be replaced into the expression because if you do that, you will get a denominator that is equal to 0 and therefore the number will be undefined. Okay, here's another type of question that we will be looking at. Between which two consecutive integers does the square root of 63 lie? So the square root of 63 lies between two consecutive integers and which integers are those? And for part B, we want the cube root of 63. Between which two integers does the cube root of 63 lie? Uh, this is what we don't want you to do, guys. I know that for the first question there, you can actually just go square root of 63 is equal to and press SD. The number there is 7,9 something and clearly that number lies between 7 and 8. And then you, you, you can just tell us that the answer is the number lies between 7 and 8. But we want to show some bit of process here because this is mathematics and it should be interesting. So this is how I want you to answer these questions. So let's look at A first. Right, so we're looking for the square root of 63. Between which two integers does the square root of 63 lie? Now square root, the opposite or the inverse of square root is square. So the first thing is, let's take the number 63 itself and think about the two squares. One square smaller than 63 and the other square bigger than 63. And we know that 63 lies between, should be 49 and 64. But these are the two squares, these two square numbers. So 63 lies between 49 and 64. You can write it like this. 63 is greater than 49, but smaller than 64. That is how I want you to do it. If 63 is greater than 49, but smaller than 64, then it means the square root of 63 should be greater than the square root of 49, but smaller than the square root of 64. Right. And now the square root of 49 is 7, and the square root of 64 is equal to 8. Right, this method is important because you will get tests, assessments where you need to answer questions like this without using a calculator. I, I can imagine if you've heard about your NBTs, those NBT examinations, 
don't require a calculator. And so you are not going to put the square root of 63 into your calculator to guess the answer. And I just use 63 as an example. So the idea, guys, is you need to know your squares. You need to learn your squares, at least know your squares like from 1 squared up to 12 squared. You need to know that 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 2, 3 squared is 9, up to 12 squared is 144. You need to know all that. All right. Uh, what about the cube root? So if it's cube root now, cube root of 63, uh, we, we need now to think in terms of cubes. So 63 lies between two cubes. And what cubes are those? Think about that. I think that would be 27 and 64. All right, please check that. Right, so 63 lies between 27 and 64. 27 and 64 are cubes, which means 63 is greater than 27, but smaller than 64, which therefore means that the cube root of 63 should be greater than the cube root of 27, but smaller than the cube root of 64. But we know the cube root of 27, that is equal to 3. And the cube root of 64 is equal to 4. Therefore, that number lies between 3 and 4. So this is the method or the approach that I would like you to learn.